Hello and welcome to the heat transfer course conduction, which is brought to you by a joint project of RWTH Aachen University and the University of Twente. My name is Wilco Roves. This video will provide you with an introduction to the topic of fins. What are fins? Which heat transfer processes are of relevance? And how does the temperature profile in a fin look like? This will be the first part of this video. And then afterwards, we will check how we can set up and derive an energy balance and the differential equation for the fin problem. But let's start with some typical applications of fins. On the left upper image, you see two different types of fins. One type is here, the axially finned tubes and the radially finned tubes. You can directly see due to the very large size of the fins that the heat transfer on the outer side of the surface is poor compared to the heat transfer on the inner side. Otherwise, the designer would have also applied fins here. So usually here, there will be a very good thumb heat transfer in the inside, maybe due to a phase change process, evaporation or condensation. And on the other side, on the outside, you will probably have a gas which has a poor thermal conductivity and as such a high surface area is needed for the heat transfer. A very typical example nowadays are fins in electric cars and electrical machines. Due to the very high power density that those electrical machines have today, the heat that needs to be removed from the electrical components is very high and especially this heat and the heat removal is a limiting factor in further increasing the power efficiency and reducing the size of those components. You can see here those pin fin structure and here is another overview of how those structures might look like. Of course, a typical radiator is also equipped with fins in order to have a good heat transfer between the hot fluid and the gas of the room, so the air. But fins cannot only be of supportive nature, they can also be a really big problem for instance, here in those kind of buildings where you have a balcony and this balcony is attached to the structure of the house and heat that is um, transferred from the floor will then go through the balcony and will lead to a high heat transfer or a high loss of energy, thermal energy here due to this unwanted fin of the balcony. So what are advantages and disadvantages of fins? So first of all, a big advantage of fins are that they increase the surface area and as such allow for a high heat transfer if the fluid, probably gas, has a low thermal conductivity and the heat needs to be transferred through the boundary layer. This is one really big advantage. Now, what is the disadvantage? So, first of all, there is a higher material consumption. There is an additional weight and additional volume. And, of course, the fluid structure interacts not only thermally, but also due to a higher pressure loss in, for instance, a channel flow, which is equipped with fins. But how can we derive the differential equation for a fin? So let's first look at one very typical example. I think you all know that from your own computer. There is a graphic card inside or also the CPU and all those components are equipped with this type of fins. This is a very simple type of fins. You see here they have um, uh, in, in the one direction they are uh, homogeneous. So it's, you can treat this as a one dimensional problem and the typical fin here looks like this part here. You have here the base plate and then the additional metal slab that is attached to it. Or I think in this process, it's completely uh, casted in this way. So what are the principal mechanisms that take place? We are here in the lecture of conduction. So conduction is really the most important part that 
takes place inside the material here. So from the base where heat is released, um, a conductive heat flow goes into the fin. On the fin surface here on both sides and maybe also on the top, there is an interaction with the fluid. So the heat that is transferred through the base into the fin will be released by a convection to the outside of the fin. So, and then thus to the fluid. And from these considerations, we can first look which temperature profile might be correct for the fin. So due to an increased temperature difference to the environment here at the um, location of the fin bottom, because we have here the highest temperature, there's in general a heat flow going from left to right. So there needs to be a potential. Um, in the simplest case, we had seen this potential to be linear in a plane wall. But on the other side, we have convection taking place on the uh, to the outer side. So the convective heat transfer is usually related to the temperature difference. Here on the surface, uh, on the base, we have a very high temperature. So the temperature difference is high to the environment. On the other side here on the head, the temperature is lower. Thus, the temperature uh, driving potential for the convection is also lower, leading to a lower heat flux being removed. So because we have a higher heat flux removed on the uh, bottom of the fin, we have a steep gradient here initially because a lot of heat is released to the environment or to the fluid. And if we go further to the top of the fin, the heat transfer by convection becomes lower and thus the slope of the temperature profile inside the fin also becomes lower. So the correct profile looks like this part here. Now the question is how can we calculate the heat flow transfer to the environment? So let's again look here into this image. We have our different mechanisms, the conduction and the convection. And now we do the energy balance. So for this, of course, we make here uh, our infinitesimal element because we want to derive a temperature profile, infinitesimal element with delta x. And then we have the conductive flow inside and the conductive flow outside. And both are balanced with the convective flow that leaves the fin in this type of infinitesimal area. So for those two different parts, we need the areas. So the relevant area for the conduction is a cross-sectional area. And the relevant area for the convection is a circumferential area times the, uh, or it's a circumference times delta x, so it's a circumferential area. Let's see what happens. Now, as usual, we start with the energy balance. We see here, we always make the balance with the uh, uh, absolute flow. So the convective flow going in, the convective flow going out at the location x plus dx minus the convection flow at the location x. They all together sum up to zero. Now we need to define those flows. So the conductive flow is a cross-sectional area times the area-specific conduction flow. And on the other side here, you can see that the conductive flow at x plus dx here on the outgoing flow is the ingoing flow plus the change that happens of the uh, flow over the element delta x. For the convective flow, it's similar. It's a circumferential area times the area specific convective flow. Now we can put those parts into the balance and we can already remove the uh, Q conduction because the only important part is the change of the heat flux of conduction. And on the other side now we have the convective flow and we need to introduce now the physics to describe those two heat transfer flows. So let's use for the conductive flow, what we already know, it's a Fourier's law. So the conductive flow is equal to minus lambda times the temperature gradient in axial direction. And for the convective heat transfer, of course, it's then the heat transfer coefficient times the potential, the driving potential for heat transfer. Now we have to see what is the direction that we assumed. 
we have assumed that the flow is, heat flow is going outside. This just means that the temperature of the fin here stays in front of the temperature of the ambience. This is, you can also turn this arrow, make a plus in the balance and change those parts here. The equation will be equivalent. It's just important to be um, consistent. Now let's insert both the definition of the convective flow and of the conductive flow in the balance and we come up with a differential equation where we have the two areas, the cross-section area and the circumference. Here, not the area, but just the circumference because we were able to um, divide our equation by delta x. So this delta x uh, was lost here on the right side and also on the left side. And then we have the thermal conductivity that has an important characteristics for the conduction and of course the heat transfer coefficient. This differential equation is, as you can see, of second order. We can thus directly say that for solving this differential equation in the next video, we will need two boundary conditions. And as mentioned, this will be something for the next video. So a few questions of comprehension. What are fins and what are they used for? So fins are used to increase the heat transfer because the heat transfer of convection is usually much lower in the boundary layer as the heat transfer of conduction if we have like a metal and due to the different thermal conductivity of fluid and um, liquid or gas we do need uh, additional surface area which we provide with those fins. Which heat flows are considered in the derivation of the fin differential equation? Of course it's an important part the conductive heat flow that goes through the fin structure and the convective heat flow that leaves the fin or we can also have not only a leaf uh, energy so thermal energy so there's a, a, a hot fin it can also be like some kind of a cold fin so energy is transferred into the fin so the direction doesn't matter and how does temperature profile look like in a fin now from the physical considerations because we have not solved the equation yet what we have seen is that the high thermal gradient of conduction is in the base of the fin and then if we go further to the top the gradient becomes lower so we have in terms of if the bottom is hot we have a convex shape of the um, temperature profile thank you for your attention and see you in the next video.